As infectious disease has declined as a source of mortality in contemporary populations, chronic diseases have risen in importance as major causes of mortality. And the two leading chronic diseases that kill people are cardiovascular disease and cancer. Cardiovascular disease is associated with cholesterol metabolism, environment, exercise, and diet. And female reproductive cancers are uh, something that we do not see so much of in naturally reproducing populations. So we will now explore the sense in which these diseases are mismatched diseases. The female reproductive cancers are elicited in part by the use of oral contraceptives, which are a new, a very new, cultural innovation. So first, heart and cardiovascular disease come through atherosclerosis mediated by cholesterol metabolism. In this little diagram here, basically what you can see is a, an artery, and it has in it plaque, which is building up here as in cross-section you can see obstructing about half the diameter of the artery there. So atherosclerosis is a thickening of arterial walls. It's caused by the accumulation of macrophages, lymphocytes, and cholesterol in plaques. So the key ingredients are initially inflammation, and then macrophages, which are recruited to the inflamed site, and the metabolism of cholesterol at that site. There are two kinds of lipoproteins, low density and high density. The low density lipoproteins transport cholesterol from the liver to other tissues, and the high density lipoproteins transport it from the tissues back to the liver. Animals, and like us, cannot catabolize cholesterol. So excess cholesterol is converted to bile acids in the liver and is excreted through the intestine. Cholesterol is absolutely essential for our normal metabolism, but when it is dysregulated, when it is out of homeostatic control, it can produce disease. Normal cells turn down the LDL, the low-density lipoprotein receptors, when they have enough cholesterol. Inflammation produces oxidized LDLs that both promote further inflammation and are taken up by scavenger receptors in macrophages. So these scavenger receptors are not downregulated when cholesterol concentrations rise and they continue to take up oxidized LDLs. This then produces more inflammation it increases the recruitment of macrophages to the, uh, in, in arteries to the arterial intima. It increases the permeability of blood vessels, and it thus increases access to low-density lipoproteins in the blood. This is a positive feedback loop, and it can operate at low levels for many years, producing larger and larger ather atherosclerotic plaque. It is a feedback loop that actually is designed as part of our defense and tissue repair system. So it is one of the vulnerabilities of our defense system. When plaques get large enough, they produce clotting, rupture, myocardial infarct, or stroke. Now environment, exercise, and diet can all ameliorate these issues. Physical inactivity, a poor diet, obesity, drinking, smoking, and emotional stress increase LDLs and lower HDLs in the blood and thereby increase risk of cardiovascular disease. Moderate exercise increases high-density lipoproteins and lowers blood pressure. A diet rich in unsaturated fats also increases high-density lipoproteins. Too much alcohol, on the other hand, damages the liver's ability to regulate these levels of lipoproteins, and smoking damages the liver, and it also inflames arterial walls. Emotional stress increases blood pressure, it increases adrenaline secretion, and cardiovascular diseases also have a genetic component largely expressed through environmental interactions of this nature. So, Cardiovascular disease is a set of mismatched diseases 
caused by sedentary lifestyles, diets rich in processed fats and sugars, and exposure to alcohol and nicotine. What about female reproductive cancers? We can learn something there by contrasting our contemporary populations with naturally reproducing populations. As we've seen, cancers are produced by mutations, and mutations occur when cells divide, and cells divide in breasts and ovaries during every menstrual cycle. Hunter-gatherer females were pregnant or lactating for much more of their lives than are women in post-industrial societies. As a result, they could expect about 150 menstrual cycles per lifetime, whereas a post-industrial woman can expect to have 350 to 400 menstrual cycles per lifetime. That implies about three times the risk of reproductive cancers in cells that divide during menstrual cycles. Obesity also increases the risk of reproductive cancers because fat cells release estrogen and in postmenopausal American women, obesity increases the risk of breast cancer 2.5 times as compared with women who are not obese. So female reproductive cancers do have an association with oral contraceptives, but it's complex and nuanced. Women who use oral contraceptives do have more menstrual cycles than women who are experiencing natural fertility. However, the impact of oral contraception is complicated. The use of oral contraceptives does increase the risk of breast cancer, but at the same time, it decreases the risk of ovarian cancer. The effects roughly cancel out with little net change in cancer risk. So to summarize, cardiovascular diseases are mismatched diseases that have multiple causation mediated by inflammation, macrophages, and cholesterol. The risk factors are physical inactivity, poor diet, obesity, drinking, smoking, and emotional stress, all of which contribute to the growth of arterial plaque, whose rupture then can cause myocardial infarct or stroke. The risk of a female reproductive cancer is affected both by oral contraception and by obesity. Women are now experiencing many more menstrual cycles per lifetime than they used to, and the fat cells of obese women also secrete estrogen, both cause cells in breast and ov ovaries to divide. However, oral contraception has opposite effects on the risks of breast and ovarian cancer, effects that roughly cancel each other out.